after the Franco-Prussian War, Alsace-Lorraine became part of the newly created German Empire. This region came under direct command of the German Kaiser, Wilhelm I. But how was life in German annexed Alsace-Lorraine? It was officially annexed as the Imperial Territory of Alsace-Lothringen. In this video, you're going to learn more about life in German annexed Alsace-Lorraine. Keep watching. Good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, I'm Stefan, I'm a Dutch history teacher. I like to cover history, preferably I do that on location. And I'm now in the city of Strasbourg. And the building you see behind me, Hotel de la Prefecture, that used to be the building where the German president, the governor, so to say, was seated. If you find it interesting as well, consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. In the summer of 1870, the Franco-Prussian War broke out. France lost and Germany was now united as the German Empire with Prussian King Wilhelm I as Kaiser of Germany. The Treaty of Frankfurt was a peace treaty with France. The Alsace-Lorraine region, in German Alsace-Lothringen, was ceded to the newly created German Empire. The territory encompassed almost all of Alsace and a quarter of Lorraine. The process of nation building wasn't over, however. The German Reich remained a federation. It comprised four kingdoms, six grand duchies, five duchies, seven principalities, three free cities and one imperial territory, also known as Reichsland Alsace Lorraine. A distinctive German national identity had yet to be developed among the Germans from different states, but also among non-Germans. Think of the Danes in northern Schleswig and the Poles in the east. And then there was the newly acquired territory of Alsace Lorraine and its inhabitants. What about them? The inhabitants were given a choice. Remain French and leave or become German and stay. And then there was the issue of religion. Now, that was not only an issue here in Alsace, because a lot of the people here were Catholic, but throughout the German Empire. See, two thirds, around 15 million people, they were Protestants. And one third, they were Catholic. 10 million people, give or take. The struggle between Reich Chancellor Otto von Bismarck and the Catholic Church is known as the Kulturkampf, the culture struggle. And it was not something that only was an issue here in Alsace, throughout the German Empire, you know, areas of mixed confession, that is where the struggle was at. Catholics were on average poorer than Protestants. They were less likely to complete secondary school and they were far less likely to attend university or to work in one of the liberal professions. These structural differences lent an appearance of permanence and intractability to the confessional divide. They meant that confessional difference correlated in many areas with differences in mentality, attitude, wealth and opportunities. And then there was the issue of language because in 1887 the German government enforced the German language on schools and that didn't sit well with the French speaking people of Alsace. And let's take a look at the economy. The region of Alsace-Lorraine had many textile factories and before the annexation the textile could be shipped to France. But now these textile factories had to compete with factories in the German Reich. The territory was a so-called imperial territory and was under direct control of Berlin. Now initially there was not much autonomy for the people in Alsace-Lorraine. However, later some concessions were made. In 1911 there was a constitution which also granted universal manhood suffrage for the provincial elections. Then. In 1913, a political crisis unfolded, which was known as the Zaben Affair. This was caused by unrest in Zaben, today Saverna, where two battalions of Prussian infantry were stationed in the barracks. Here, second lieutenant had to classify the new Alsatian recruits as Wacker, which means sluggish people, a derogatory German name for the Alsatians. As a result, there were riots and protests among the locals. The army intervened, but the unrest spread. Kaiser Wilhelm II chose the side of his army officers. In the Reichstag, however, there were also protests against these measures. 
In both the German and the French press the affair was heavily discussed. The result was that the image of Wilhelm II, already severely damaged by visible scandals, deteriorated even further. Russian militarism also came under further attack. The aversion of many Alsatians to the annexation of their territory by the Empire in 1871 was given a new impulse, but before this could escalate any further, the First World War broke out. This proved that the region of Alsace-Lorraine was never fully integrated into the German Empire. When the First World War broke out, the French tried to advance into the area. Just as we saw elsewhere on the Western Front, the fighting resulted into a stalemate and 30,000 soldiers died. The area was nicknamed Little Verdun. Let's focus on what happened to the citizens of the region in terms of military draft. From the 350,000 recruits, around 70,000 deserted or joined the French army. Thousands more fled to neutral Switzerland. German high command feared problems when stationing Elsa's draftees on the Western Front. Many of them were therefore shipped to the Eastern Front or served in the Navy or logistics behind the front line. During the war, anti-militarism and even outright hostility to the Reich were openly given expression. Early in the war, there were several cases of uttering incitements to rebel. For example, in August 1914, a steel worker was sentenced to six months in prison because he had shouted, down with the war, down with Prussia, viva la France, merde la Prusse. In reality, opposition to Germany was expressed only by individuals and left traces only when they came into conflict with the state. Only a small proportion of anti-German incidents therefore came before the courts, but the absolute number is high, given that courts could only try persons who were overheard and denounced. By the end of the war, there had been at least 2,389 prosecutions for showing an anti-German attitude, about 80% of them successful. When the First World War came to an end, there was a very short-lived Alsace-Lorraine Soviet Republic. But that one got taken down by the French because the French armies moved into the region and retook it. The story of this short-lived state is a story for another time. Please consider subscribing if you have not already and hit that notification bell if you want to support me so I can make better, cooler and more awesome content for you. Please go to my Patreon page, you can also support me via PayPal, the links are in the description. I want to thank you for watching and best wishes from Strasbourg, France.